Hello and welcome to the Business Forum London. I'm Joy McKnight, Deputy Editor at The Banker, and I'm joined by Matt Armstrong Barnes, Chief Technologist at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Matt, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. You were just in a session about le leveraging the power of AI, and there was like more than 200 people in it, yeah, so exactly. super popular. So can you tell me a little bit about sort of the new developments that have happened in artificial intelligence that's really sort of made a breakthrough recently? Yeah, sure. I mean, AI, it, it was great in the session, so many people coming along, and it was great to see the interest and the level of dialogue that we had. Um, AI's come along, has made leaps and bounds. I mean, from a HPE perspective, we've been deeply involved in high-performance computing for a significant number of years. You know, it's part of our heritage in our DNA. And high-performance computing's really been driving the AI revolution. Um, because AI has a specific set of use cases that mean that it's kind of got different requirements on, on its computing infrastructure in the form that it ingests a load of information in order to make some informed decisions. The thing that's happening is technology is catching up with the maths. That's kind of the thing that's happened. And um, it was back in 2012 when um, GPUs started playing, playing a role in, in artificial intelligence. So if you think about a computer, there are two main processing units. There's the GPU and the CPU. Um, and what the, the CPU is the equivalent to a sports car. It's really fast, carries very small amounts of, of information. Whereas what AI needs is lots and lots of information to be moved at any one period of time. And a GPU is a bit like a lorry, so you can load lots of information in it, and then it can, um, it can transport that very effectively. And those have been some of the key sort of evolutions that have happened in the AI world. Okay, but how is artificial intelligence really being applied in the financial services world? Yeah, there's lo loads of great use cases coming out. Some of the early ones we see are around chatbots, um, which is people's ability to interact with an artificial intelligence that's that, or something that's machine learning based, that's going to be, you can interact with it online. And predominantly from a, a core banking perspective, um, it takes the load off the contact centers. But also, one of the interesting things, when you interact with a chatbot, the chance of selling insurance is much higher through a chatbot than it is through a contact center agent. So it's actually demonstrating some real business value. Outside of that, we're seeing chatbots start to evolve outside of point transactions, you know, what can I do about this and what can I do about that. Now I, can, I could message it to say, um, can you tell me my balance? Um, and those are just some of the sort of core contact center functions. We're also seeing it applied deeper in the contact center in terms of compliance, looking at transcripts as to the, as the interaction you've had with agents. So historically, you've got a lot of historical data. How do you demonstrate to the regulator that you are compliant with artificial intelligence? You can review all of that information and demonstrate that you, your level of compliance um, by looking at all of your historical information. But also you can start to look at the, va the high value customers that you want to retain and your interaction with them. Um, as well as that, in terms of the front end, you can also then apply it deeper into some of the fraudulent transactions. Um, obviously, there's a big move in the keynote plenary session. They talked about this as being one of the key things in financial services. So using artificial intelligence to start to predict future events based on previous behavior. But there is some concerns about the use of AI. What do you think are the biggest concerns specifically in financial services? The big one is the age-old adage of the computer told me to do it. It's not going to stand up in a court of law. So when it comes to using AI, AI is a tool that needs to be in every organization's toolkit. Um, and it's the same for financial services. So some of the concerns around when the regulator has, who, who has a, an obligation to inspect your models, um, because of the way that AIs are currently constructed, that's quite challenging. So um, that, some, some of the role of the regulator needs to change. And also, do you want to interact with an AI? I think the newer generations who have a much more messaging-based mentality are really happy to interact with an artificial intelligence and get really, really rapid responses, whereas different generations might still want to speak to a person. So what kind of regulation do you think sort of needs to be put in place to, to really assuage those kind of concerns around AI? Yes, I mean, AI is a market creator. Um, so if, if we think about it, so if we take the chatbot example, um, so if I'm interacting with a chatbot, um, do I, do I want it to understand that I've gone into a garage to, to buy a car? Um, so it, it's going to use my location, it's going to use some core information about my financials, and it's going to send me 
here's our best percentage rate if you want to buy a car. And obviously that's now moving into areas potentially that are outside the scope of current, um, the current regulators, so, or the current compliance models that are in place. So as a result, the compliance regimes need to change to be able to incorporate these new models. And AI needs to play a role as well in who watches the watchmen. Because AI models are complex and difficult to interact or difficult to work out. So if the computer says no, wh why did it say no? And th the regulators have to understand that. So what we're seeing is um, something called algorithm algorithmic accountability, which is coming out of um, academic institutions, and that's being applied into starting to pop the hood on AI and understand how some of these decisions are made. Yeah, because so, someone was talking to me about explainable AI, so that's exactly yes, what that yes, is. Yeah. Yes. And there are some really interesting startups, and a lot of thought is going into that, as well as the ethics around the information that you're putting in to make sure that, fundamentally, AI is a mathematical equation. Whatever you put in is going to fundamentally influence what you put out, and that needs to be done in an ethical way that takes into consideration, you know, gender, race, and all of those other key considerations to make sure that you're getting an ethical decision out of the back end. And the, those are some of the key things I think the regulator needs to adopt, and also bring it into their toolkit to make sure that they've got all the tools that they need to start answering some of these questions. Excellent. Thanks so much for your insights, Matt. Okay, that's great. Thank you.